Corina Shuteo. I'm the director of the Romanian Cultural Institute here in New York and the initiator and organizer of the Romanian Film Festival. Uh, uh, and, and we are very happy to, to uh, welcome you here at the sixth edition of the, of the Romanian Film Festival in New York. Um, uh, my, my colleague and friend, Mihai Kirilov, is uh, also the artistic director of this festival. And uh, before uh, launching the debate uh, this evening, I would like to say that we had the three um, uh, marvelous day at the festival and um, due to the partnership uh, between us and uh, the Film Society of Lincoln Center and our partner Scott, Scott Foundas, who is associate program director at the um, uh, Film uh, Society of Lincoln Center is also one of our partners. We are very happy that we can uh, organize this wonderful event in 2011 uh, here. Um, last but not least, I wanted to say that uh, this edition has a very, very special dedication and um, maybe it is this the place to praise again the intellectual figure of Alex Leo Sherban, who uh, was uh, a friend, a supporter, and many, many times a guide uh, for us during the previous five editions. And this is why we dedicated uh, the sixth edition of the Romanian Film Festival to him. So the panel this evening has um, um, very good, I, I would say, and complimentary uh, uh, group of people. Uh, and I will start by introducing film critic, Romanian film critic um, Magda Mihailescu, who made us the honor to come as a guest and who has, uh, uh, who has an impressive uh, career in uh, film criticism in, in Romania. So she uh, uh, knows very much about um, what happened also before the Romanian new wave, so her view uh, about all this is uh, extremely interesting and can complement what we here know about uh, the, the, the new wave. Then Scott found us, as I said, who's a film critic also, and now, uh, since not so, so long, um, uh, the um, associate director of, uh, programmer of the, the Film Society of Lincoln Center. Mihai Kirilov, who is a film critic too, besides being a marvelous curator and uh, artistic director of Transylvania International Film Festival and of our festival here in New York, and Jay Weisberg, who is a variety film critic and also a um, very dedicated and committed, committed follower of the phenomenon of Romanian cinema since 2006. So I will start by asking each of you, because the... the um, uh, let's say the key uh, the key uh, words for this panel is uh, Romanian cinema, uh, the new wave, the tipping point, and we chose this Malcolm Gladwell uh, um, um, kind of phrase because uh, we we wanted to again to relaunch again this debate about how did it all start, how why and how uh, did it happen that the uh, Romanian new wave in cinema had this kind of impact internationally and created uh, such an important um, follow-up since 2006. So I will just ask each of you to tell us a little bit about uh, your story about the Romanian new wave. How do you position yourself uh, towards this phenomenon and what's the explanation that you give to its success? Yes. Yeah. First of all, I should like to um, make into profit this encounter because uh, <coughs> uh, despite all this discussion about the new wave, uh, I have the feeling that in, country, in our country, in Romania, between our circle, in our circle of film, criti of film, uh, film critics, there are still so, some doubts. There is a new wave, there is a new Romanian cinema, there is a confusion between, in the, between these uh, two titles. So we have not, uh, no, not yet decided. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you, just by case, uh, you will ask um, our dear uh, greatest 
a film director, film director, filmmaker, it's Christy Puyo. Mm. What about the new wave in Romania? He will say, no, no, no. There is not a new wave. There is not a, um, a movement. There are only individualities. There's only me, <laughs> <laughs> he would say. <laughs> <laughs> Beginning with me. So, so this is why it's quite uh, it's paradoxical. It's uh, a little strange. So I have the occasion, opportunities, many opportunities all around the world to discuss about new wave. And uh, in my country, in our country, in Romania, I, I do still hesitate to, uh, to use uh, this uh, formula. It seems like uh, this new wave is just a label, uh, a paint scotch uh, on a body, uh, sorry, <laughs> on a corpus, a body of films, uh, and so odd. So, this is not my opinion. By, uh, I, I wanted to, uh, to confess this, to, 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 to say all this, because really I, I, uh, I am waiting in this evening an answer from my colleague, from foreigners, from my dear colleague Scott and uh, Jay, who know quite, quite, quite well, uh, they've been in Romania, so in my opinion, there is a new wave. To tell the truth, I do prefer the new Romanian cinema, hmm. because it's more large, it's more open, it's more generous. Hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, there is a professor from Cluj uh, who has a proposal to discuss about the new, new wave. <laughs> what, what shall we do so in the future? <laughs> in, the, in the perspective, uh, in uh, 50 years, uh, we'll discuss the new, 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 new way. So it's ridiculous. So I think the new Romanian cinema is better, in my opinion. I don't know what you, what, what, what do you think. As a terminology, yes, but a but but how yes. but but how would you, uh, Magda? Now yeah. that that we talk about this, how would you define what this new wave? How wh what 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 would you say about what did it bring? In fact, for the new Romanian cinema, there what did it bring? There are in the history of cinema uh, some um, some movements who appear as uh, a rise like a miracle. For instance, mm. the uh, Iranian cinema. So. I remember that uh, four years ago uh, at our uh, first round table about the new Romanian, about the international round table with uh, Jay, with you now. If you remember, uh, our dearest friend, Leo Sherban, he asked, uh, maybe we Romanian, we are the Iranian of the Europe. Yeah. <laughs> because the Iranian cinema has appeared as a miracle. Maybe sometimes there are a miracle, but in my opinion, the Romanian cinema is not, is not a miracle was just a phenomenon who had to, who had to appear after such a long uh, dark night, mm. as you entitle one of your, uh, mm -hmm. of your book, uh, books about the, uh, dedicated to the Romanian cinema, uh, was just, we had to, there was a must to say, and the history prepared, the history prepared this new generation because also in my opinion, uh, a new cinema must, must have generations, not only films and authors. Mm. This is the experience, it's the experience of La French uh, Nouvelle Vague, the experience of English free cinema, the experience of Italian new realism. And in Romania, after 10 years, after 10 years, beginning from December 1989, was just the time where a new generation has appeared. They had uh, 30 and uh, something, mm. so, um, they had a new, a new view, a new look about the reality in Romania. They hadn't many, many connections with the past, but they were, li how to say, enough intelligence to, to understand our history. Mm. This, this is is your, is your this point, Eugene? Scott? Well, I think Magda makes a good point because <clears throat> there are always these uh, kind of these movements that seem to come from certain national cinemas, and more often than not, the, when you talk to the filmmakers, they, they say that they don't see it as a movement. Uh, I mean, I've experienced this recently talking to some of the, the young German filmmakers who've been grouped under this term, the Berlin School, and, mm -hmm. and they sort of all see that as a designation given by foreign critics to put these films in some kind of context. And, and more often than not, I think that's what it is. I mean, what's undeniable is that you suddenly had a renaissance of filmmaking in Romania, and you had 
a large number of, of Romanian films turning up at prestigious international festivals and winning prizes. And because uh, <clears throat> so many of the films seem to share certain concerns about uh, looking back at the time of the revolution or the, uh, the end of Ceausescu, um, and, uh, or, or dealing with a uh, kind of political bureaucracy, as you see in, uh, in Police Adjective and the East of Bucharest, that, um, uh, you know, it was irresistible for people writing about them to, to kind of come up with some sort of label. I think almost necessary in a way so that somebody halfway around the world uh, reading about the films could, uh, could understand uh, you know, what was uh, significant about it. So I think it's, it's useful to slap a label on it, but I think that um, what, uh, what Puyu says uh, is almost um, identical to what um, uh, Vin Vender says about the new German cinema of the 70s, which is that uh, it's not that, that he and Fassbender and Herzog were really collaborators in any meaningful way. They just happened to all emerge at the same time and again, this was a kind of a convenient shorthand for people to write about the films or festivals to show the films. I think you really only have in the French New Wave um, a, a, an instance where these people really all did come from the same mm -hmm. place, Cahiers du Cinéma, and they were in many cases collaborating on each other's films, writing the screenplay for some one that someone else directed or acting in someone's films, and I, I think that's maybe less the case with the uh, with the new Romanian films, and and for you, Scott, what was the m m kind of the moment when you really saw this could be a phenomenon that would interest you? What was in your personal critical history? Well, I think that I think like for a lot of people, it was Cannes in two thousand five when you had in uh, in a certain regard you had uh, Death of Mr. Lazarescu and. Uh, uh, how I Spent the End of the World, and then in the director's fortnight you had the 1208 East of Bucharest. Uh, so suddenly, uh, you know, these were three films that a lot of people were talking about, particularly um, Death of Mr. Lazarescu, which ends up winning the prize of Un Certain Regard, and, and East of Bucharest wins the Camera d'Or, so you have, uh, you know, inevitably a lot of, a lot of attention, and uh, that uh, I, I was personally so struck by Death of Mr. Lazarescu, which just really seemed like a UFO. I mean, it just it seemed like a, a film unlike, uh, unlike anything else that year in Cannes or really that year in world cinema that I immediately became interested to know more about Christy Puyu. And then through uh, traveling to Bucharest to interview him, you know, started to uh, become aware of what else was going on there and seeing, uh, seeing films by these other filmmakers. Mm. Yes. Yes. Just sorry. Yeah. Uh, just because Scott uh, mentioned uh, the French uh, Nouvelle Vague, the French New Wave. Look, the French Nouvelle Vague lasted three years, <laughs> actually. <laughs> yes. So, yes. So I studied. I, I have written a lot of things, even a book about the French nu uh, Nouvelle Vague, uh, uh, from uh, fifty for, from uh, fifty eight to sixty one. Yeah, but 61. but what's to but say is that those Roma people. The Romanian cinema. It's already a history of 10 years, beginning yeah. with the Duff and the Star of Christy Puyo first film. So, no, but I, I think, think with it's the just another, another reason to, to entitle us to speak about a new Romanian cinema. Well, yeah, but I think the, the connection is the French, the filmmakers of the French New Wave continued to work. You know, and uh, some of them are still working, obviously. So that, like, like Godard, so so they had long careers, and I think the reason that we're still talking about the Roma new Romanian cinema or Romanian new wave, whatever you want to call it, ten years later, is that those directors who first emerged are still working, and now we're seeing people who were the assistants of those directors and people who are maybe a half generation younger than those directors emerging with films that are uh, uh, you know, attaining a similar level of attention at the, the prestigious festivals. Right, and because we, you just mentioned death of Mr. Lazarescu as being indeed the, uh, the, the moment of impact for yeah. many, many people. Uh, brother, I just want to mention someone who wasn't present here at the opening, Gabriel Spahiu, who is uh, having one of the main roles in death of Mas Mr. Lazarescu. And thank you, Gabriel, for joining us for the festival. He just arrived. Um, Mihai Kirilov now about the same question. About the same question, about the label and about uh, where was I when New Romanian cinema happened. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I don't think we should 
bother that much with with this with this label. I think, in my opinion, we can we can call it uh, the way we w we want and the way we feel like it sounds reasonable. I mean, in my opinion, the new Romanian wave uh, it qualifies. It's it's a good description for that. The new Romanian cinema, it's uh, probably even better. And actually, that's why when we um, when we um, were editing, starting to edit a publication, a, a yearly publication called uh, Aperitif with uh, with uh, Corina and the Romanian Cultural Institute in New York, and she has it there. Uh, that's what we put on the on the cover, the new Romanian cinema, uh, and uh, that's what we were we are actually implying implying if but if we have to if we have to let's say labelize and i think we should labelize i mean ev everything needs to be labelized in order to be more catchy attractive uh, grabbable um, and if there's a more accurate term to define everything that happened back then and still happens it's maybe neorealism let's say i mean let's let's label it uh, with a um, with a current, and I think what what happened back then, it's uh, in a way uh, well not that much related with the Iranian uh, wave or uh, cinema or minimalism, the one that Magda invoked, but uh, uh, the Italian neo realism from the from the fifties, because the Romanian neo realism of two thousand, the same as the. Uh, Italian neorealism of the 50s uh, contained this, this uh, let's say, uh, ethic, uh, I don't know whether it's the good word, germ or seed? Seed, seed yeah, uh, contained, I mean, had this as a, as a source and they all started from, uh, they all had this intention of uh, Getting back a sort of consciousness of the of the reality. That's what happened in the 50s with Italian filmmakers going in the street filming real people Ordinary people with their ordinary stories emotional whatever but simple stories and powerful and that's what happened back in 2000 when new Romanian cinema happened like Alex said in our trailer this year for the festival the best thing that happened to Romanian cinema was the ordinary people and their ordinary stories so uh, if there's a label I I, I, I would use it's this neorealism, not neo neorealism, because we didn't have neorealism <laughs> in Romania to start with. So we have to uh, we have to use this term. Where was I back then? I uh, and uh, I think for those who for those who know what happened in Romania before '89 and what cinema meant back then and who was making cinema and what the cinema of that time was was making off and then what happened in Romania after 89 for 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 10 years which were very uh, chaotic and at the end of the day irrelevant years in terms of cinematic achievements with very few exceptions um, and looking back now with a with a with the right perspective I think that back in 2000 actually in 2001 because there's Again, there's one thing I, I, I keep repeating, and we shouldn't forget this. In Romania in the year 2000, there was no film made whatsoever, good, bad, none. So it, clearly, it was, it was a moment, uh, it, it was the black hole. I mean, from that moment, really, something, something got to happen. And uh, looking back now with this perspective and knowing everything that happened before and after, it's, it, it's obvious that uh, this necessity of a, of a new type of cinema, a new kind of approach to cinema to, to, to tell a story was needed. And, and all this new generation that actually came uh, in uh, in 2000 of course we and we should invoke all these class clashes between generations even though the young generation will never admit that this is a response to 
uh, what the old generation was doing. Uh, and maybe they're, maybe they're right, but in the same time, I mean, let's rephrase it. I think the new generation that came into, in 2000, in the new Romanian cinema, it's the response of the, of the, of the lies that were, uh, that were portrayed in cinema by the old generation, and it was not necessarily their fault, but it was the time that actually didn't privilege the reality the way it was. So 10 years after the Romanian Revolution, which is 2001, it was finally the time for these new young filmmakers to, to, uh, to, to embrace reality, to face reality, to, to, to bite reality uh, in a maybe desperate attempt to, to, to show it how it is and to recoup uh, this, uh, um, this need of showing reality and this need of showing the truth that was actually denied before by the way the whole society was, the communist society was, was designed. Yeah, I think if I was clear enough. <laughs> I'm going to um, bypass the label question because I think we've, we've discussed that. So, uh, and instead talk about Romanian cinema as viewed by the world, which, um, and jumping in with, with Lazarescu, which um, I was not in Cannes in 2001 to see Christie's first film, uh, Stuff and Dough. So um, it was, and it was never released in the US as we know until 2008. So there was quite a long period between between uh, its its release uh, in the rest of the world and when it came to the U.S. Um, with Lazarescu, I w when I saw that at Cannes, it completely blew me away um, on many levels. But one of the intriguing things, I think, not only for myself but for a lot of other critics, is we were all um, raised, trained in looking at East European cinema in the fifties and sixties, seventies. Uh, th th these are films that have been celebrated in Poland, in Hungary, in the Czech Republic, then Czechoslovakia, uh, Yugoslavia as well. And Romania always seemed apart from that. We weren't, we were not seeing those films. Mm. I don't know that any of Lucian Pintilia's films were ever mm. released in the U.S. Mm. So th this was a, a terra incognita for a lot of us coming from the states originally, and. Um, Lazarescu became uh, this, this, besides a calling card, it also became an intrigue, uh, there was something intriguing about it. Wh where did this come from? I think many of us began to say, why is it that we were not exposed to what came before? And now that we've seen this, we want to learn everything. We want to know more. We want to, to see not only what the new generation is coming, I is making now, but also where Lazarescu comes from, what are the roots, how did this grow? Because of course it's not spontaneous generation, it, 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 it has roots, it has, uh, it's a response to something. And uh, I think that we're still struggling in a way with uh, finding that. We're, we're still looking for reasons. I'm not sure that we're going to always find that, that ideal equation that's going to tell us this is why this has grown this way. But. Um, uh, I, I think part of the fascination now is that sense of coming from a void I in terms of, of world perception mm. into sudden um, uh, such extraordinary prominence. Mm. Well, thank you, Jay, for mentioning the fact that indeed, for example, Lucien Pintilia's film films were not uh, released in the U.S. We will have the pleasure to organize together with MoMA next year in March. Uh, retrospective, and we're very happy that uh, MoMA accepted to, to do this as a Fantastic. result of the fact that uh, uh, the, uh, the programmer from MoMA saw uh, Pintilia's films in the Transylvania International Film Festival this year, and, and uh, it, it, it is a sort of a um, recu recuperation of some of the roots of what is indeed uh, the, the, the new Romanian cinema as compared to what Pintilia did in his time. So this is a very needed kind of, of uh, enrichment and complementing information from this point of view for American uh, audiences. But regarding now to 
uh, uh, the, the second question I, I would address is uh, regards the fact that uh, however, I mean, like uh, Scott says that uh, when he saw uh, death of Mr. Lazarescu, it was like a UFO, and uh, and uh, Jay says it's, it, it was terra incognita indeed, so it was very attractive because it was something completely new about uh, 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 Romania. You, you, you didn't know anything about Romanian cinema. Still, uh, in the same time, uh, the, the phenomenon, the, the, the kind of, of impact Romanian cinema had internationally was very big, big despite the fact that um, uh, each of the films uh, that were very successful were uh, films that were in a way bleak and dealing with very sad and troubling and uh, unsettling uh, kind of themes. Uh, the, the first films that really impacted from Romanian cinema, well, of course, 1208 East of Bucharest is full of humor, but in the same time speaks about <laughs> an extremely <laughs> troubling moment and about a very, very, uh, how, how should I say, very gray and sad reality in a certain way. How do you explain, I mean, for each of you, what is, what I what is that these films have? Is it the actors? Is it the way they deal with the, with subject? Is it the, um, the 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 voice, the context they create? What is it that made all these films go on and on and be successful? Are we going back to Magda, or, uh, or are we starting from Jay this time? <laughs> but, but just a minute, Jay. Just because I want Please. to really, I want to thank you because you you mentioned the about something about the roots. Because I think we can't pass so easily about uh, over this, uh, this topic, this subject. Because the new Romanian cinema has not arrived on an empty ground. Mm. Really, we have uh, Rosa Pintilies, mm. um, uh, Daniel uh, Alexandru Tatos. Um, maybe you know uh, our first uh, um, book about the new Romanian cinema. So I have I coordinated a book with my. Uh, with a colleague of us, uh, Cristina Korcovescu, uh, one of the famous historian film cinema in Romanian cinema. Um, Mihai Kirilov uh, had a chapter, I myself, I had a chapter, and another, a more young <laughs> film critic. Uh, so it was a book uh, about the 10 best films from all the history of Romanian cinema. And uh, among these ten, uh, these ten films, there was Pintili, a reenactment, was two films by uh, Mircea Daneluc, or the film by uh, Dan Pizza and Mircea Veroiu, and uh, one film by Alexandru Tatos, no? Uh, yeah, 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 yes. so, sequences, yes. So, this means really we had a background before, but unfortunately, our history was, the history you already know, maybe, I, I'm sure, who forbidden us to coagulate a movement, a generation. So I think it's good, it's good to not, no, not, uh, not, to, forget, uh, not to forget our roots anyway. No, yes. but I, it's also the fact that yes. it was not, it didn't tr transgress the borders yes. and all these, all these authors were not known in the moment they, they, uh, they created. So coming back for, for yeah. from this, I mean, what, what do you think really makes this voice unique and the fact that it, it went on and on being su successful? Maybe a foreigner, a foreigner view is, uh, is more it's, interesting. It's, it's useful it's, here. It's, it's more it's interesting. It, 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 I, I appreciate that it's useful, but it's also something that um, I, I like to think that most non-Romanian critics, or rather critics in general, always realize that we're always going to miss something. Um, we're going to miss a certain tone in films that aren't in our original language. And I remember speaking with Mihai once about uh, vulgarity in Romanian mm. and being told that actually Romanian is one of the most vulgar languages when they <laughs> want to be vulgar. Um, and this is something that doesn't always come across very well, so there are at times escalations to the happiest girl in the world film, which uh, the language becomes increasingly vulgar as it goes on, wasn't really conveyed through the subtitles. Mm. Um, so that means that we're always going to miss something. So I'm prefacing what I'm going to say by realizing that, yes, on the one hand, it's useful to ask a foreigner. On the other hand, we foreigners have to realize that there's always going to be something we're missing. Yeah. Um, in terms of what, uh, what intrigues me about Romanian cinema, uh, and, and I think what's, what's we're all fascinated by, it's, it's, a, it's a mixture of, it's, it's language, certainly. It's the subtlety of the language, it's the subtlety of the writing, it's that um, 
it's move. It, it's extraordinary naturalistic, of course. It almost feels as if it's not scripted, but we know it's been heavily scripted. But it's an intelligent use of subtlety that I find extraordinary. So, police adjective, for example, um, which I think for me is one of the greatest of the films that uh, has come out in the last ten years. Um, there's an intelligence there that's not. It's not in your face. It's not. Uh, it's not full of itself. It's. Th I, I find, for the most part, I'm not talking about the directors. I'm talking about their films. There's a, a humbleness. Mm. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, I'll leave that at that. And um, that uh, that's intriguing. The acting is extraordinary. The um, even just the use of the camera as well, watching stuff in Doe now again um, and watching it on the big screen as well, seeing what's being done with the camera, seeing what's being done in the frame, seeing how the main mm. character is isolated for so long, which ultimately for me is what the whole entire film is about, the sense of isolation and being alone and realizing, discovering there that you're alone uh, always is... Um, one of many things. I don't know. It's very difficult, I think, to sort of pinpoint exactly why we're intrigued, other mm. than the fact that the films are terrific. But also, but also, why it's not only why why you would be intrigued, Jay. But why do you think that, despite the fact that it was not not all of them with what we could call crowd pleasers, mm, no, not it, at all. It's 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 <laughs> it's films that went on being successful, touching something, making having this vibe that uh, touched something. And the voices were very different. We, I mean, Absolutely. if you compare Radu Montan to Christy Puyo to yeah. uh, Christian Mujic, you, you would see, or to, to Porumbo, you would see that all the voices uh, are very, very different. But the, uh, sometimes what they're, the, the themes, the subject are difficult. The, the, the context is uh, sometimes gray, heavy, uh, problematic. So that, that, that would be, is, is it what, why, how come? I uh, I think we have to realize that there are several different kinds of audiences, of course. And there's the art house crowd, as much as they might not want to use that expression. And then there's the multiplex crowd. Um, obviously, these films are not going to appeal to the multiplex crowd. And, and that's fine. Um, we know that, uh, for the most part, foreign films, foreign films don't do well in the US anyway. People don't like to read subtitles, um, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> so um, the people who do, don't mind a heavy subject. Um, they're, 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 they're looking to be challenged, they're looking to be stimulated, entertained as well, but they're not going to shy away from subject films that are about abortion, films that are about the um, killing bureaucracy. Um, th these aren't themes that people are necessarily going to be concerned about because we're seeing them all the time. People, th th those of us who are, are immersed in world cinema, we're, we're, we're used to. I mean, there was a joke at Cannes this year. There was a, a, um, a chart that was made, uh, rape, sexual perversion, um, uh, what was it, uh, pedophilia, yeah, was uh, torture. <laughs> and then we realized that almost every film in Cannes had check multiple checks next to every one. Mm -hmm. We're <laughs> used to seeing these things all the time. I wish the directors would stop. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's, that's not really a, a problem. For, mm. for us, I think, mm. in, in, in general, for most people who are, w who are engaged with world cinema, it's, it's, we're fine with it. Mm. Yeah, I think, in a way, you answer the question in your questions, you know, which is that uh, the things that, uh, that were so appealing about discovering these films were the, the, you know, many different strong voices, one not like the other among these filmmakers, mm. Um, in terms of the bleak subject matter, yes, I mean, you know, one of the major figures uh, to emerge from world cinema in the last two decades was, uh, was uh, Mikhail Haneke from Austria, who's mm. a veritable prince of darkness, <laughs> and his films have gone all around the world and even had good box office, so I don't think that's an impediment <laughs> at all. And I do think, um, you know, uh, Mihai mentioned the neorealism uh, uh, connection, and I think uh, when you see um, <coughs> um, Corneliu Poromboyu's films, you're reminded a bit of the um, the Czech new wave films mm -hmm. of people like Milos Forman and Yuri Menzel, and so I think in a way uh, the art house audience around the world has sensed these connections in a way, and they see that uh, these films are kind of a, a continuation of certain traditions in, in world cinema, uh, while at the same time very intimately connected to 
the recent uh, history of Romania and, and very specific issues. Um, and also, you've had an incredible technical proficiency. I, I think, you know, all of these films have been really striking for how well made they are. Uh, and then also the, uh, the group of actors. I mean, two years in a row, we had um, acting winners in the Los Angeles Film Critics Association. Uh, we had uh, uh, Luminita Giorgio win Best Supporting Actress for The Death of Mr. Lazarescu. And then <clears throat> the next year, Vlad Ivanov as Best Supporting Actor in, f in 432. And Anna Maria Marinko was the r r runner up for Best Actress. So, uh, you know, you can't help but be struck by all of that. It's kind of, I think what it was, it was the whole package. It was the, 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 the technical proficiency, the acting, the subject matter, the newness of it, it all uh, sort of hitting you at, at once. And then I would just, to pick up on what Magna was saying, say that, you know, as, as I started to meet these filmmakers and inter interview a lot of them, I was always asking, well, what about the, the you know, Romanian cinema that came before you? Because mm -hmm. it was so inaccessible, really, until the retrospective here at the Lincoln Center in 2008, and finally, more recently, some uh, some DVDs becoming available, like of, of Tato's films. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, everybody mentions uh, the uh, reenactment by Pintillier, mm -hmm. and everybody mentions uh, sequences by Tato's and, and microphone test by Daniel Luke. So these uh, films clearly are a touchstone for the new wave, but uh, they're almost impossible to see for people anywhere in the world, mm. including in Romania. Mm. I'm just going to interject for a moment, and this is something that Kiri's heard me say a number of times, and I've written about it. One of the problems also with uh, our exposure to Romania is that Romanian culture in general has never really been translated into English, so I would say that of all the East European literatures, Romanian is the least translated into English. One of the, the classic playwrights, the classic novelists, you'll be hard pressed to find anything in print, let alone anything out of print. So that's we're, we're already coming from a disadvantage. The French were much more uh, connected culturally with Romania, and so you can find a lot there. So we're all we're, we're at a disadvantage. We're, we're we're used to being able to read Hungarian novels, Russian novels, Czech novels try to find a classic 19th century Romanian novel in English and you probably won't be able to. Yeah, so I that's think that's an important point that's as well. True. That's true. That's, that's a territory where we, where we are trying hard to recuperate now, but yeah. it's, it's true. It's absolutely, it's absolutely true. Magda and Kiri were about, about this question of what, what made yes. this so I successful. Say, <coughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. Just a short, short line. <laughs> um, <laughs> four, four weeks ago, I was in Spain at the Valladolid Festival, and there I attended the round table, named in Spanish, Realismos versus La Realidad. Realismos is plural, it's a little difficult to translate into English because it means many um, different kinds of, uh, different kinds of realism, realism, so. Um, I, I, I think that this, uh, this formula, this title, uh, matches quite well the Romanian cinema because I think there's not only uh, a manner to approach the realism in art, particularly in cinema, mm. in, my, in my, my opinion. And th I think this is, um, how, to, how to explain, this is why the Romanian cinema now, in this moment, is, in my opinion, uh, very rich, because the method, uh, the manner in which uh, Christy Puyo approached the reality is quite different from the manner of um, you already mentioned. Radu Muntan. Radu Muntan or uh, Catalin Mitulescu, who is more uh, lyrical. Uh, and uh, so I think these different voices to have in a short, in a short space of time, really, in 10 years, especially in the last five, six years, some uh, um, a bunch of uh, new of new filmmakers having such a different voices. This means really that something is happening in Romania in the field of uh, of cinema. Mm. Well, I will I would go back to what I said uh, at, the, at the beginning, uh, and, and I think for me everything is related to this uh, need, need for truth, for this thirst for truth that uh, that all the 
the new Rum Romanian filmmakers had when they started making films. And uh, you mentioned also uh, crowd pleaser, and this is another discussion, uh, another thing that that um, inf influences the, the the whole discussion. I mean, the way the way I see things and the way I think uh, the new Romanian cinema was so successful with 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 film critics. Uh, more like foreign film critics. Let's talk from the very beginning because we've just seen probably some of you, you've just seen Stuff and Doe, which is a film released in 2001 with a decent to good success in Cannes. I mean, nobody knew what to expect back then, but the film got good reviews. Nobody said it was a masterpiece, <coughs> but they, are, they were praising it for the, for the novelty of it, and it was, it was surprising, whereas in Romania this film was, was simply destroyed back then. I mean, it, there, there were just a few, a few film critics who, <coughs> who, are, uh, who are saluting the, this film, like completely shocked as well by its, by its novelty, whereas this was a film that was destroyed by the officials, this was a film uh, that that uh, not that many film critics understood, so it was kind of a false start in, in Romania. And in a way, uh, even nowadays in Romania, the, 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 the Romanian films are, are less welcome or, or, or well seen by, 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 uh, by film critics and, and audiences, whereas they're much more welcome and praised abroad. Someone said that the Romanian cinema needs to be lobbied not abroad anymore, uh, but at home, yeah. because uh, and it uh, all goes back with uh, with how actually cinema as an industry or institution is is seen in 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 various societies. In uh, in Romania, nobody uh, made cinema or saw cinema like a like a proper institution, like a professionalized one, like a like something that can be more than entertainment, or I don't know. I mean, it, it was not something to be taken that that seriously. Uh, okay, back then, in before eighty nine, it was it was taken very seriously because it was used as a as a propaganda. But afterwards, it was uh, it was kind of it was kind of lost. So uh, the the audience. I mean, the relation between the Romanian audience and the Romanian cinema is. Uh, is a is a kind of a hate relationship. I mean, because we can't speak about a box office for a Romanian film, no matter how successful it is. I mean, four months, three weeks, and two days didn't get a huge box office hit in Romania, but a medium one. The same goes for um, uh, Cornelius' film, and it gets even even more depressing nowadays. I mean, now the Romanian films are well known and uh, and bought into distribution in various countries whereas in Romania <laughs> you have a film like Tuesday after Christmas by Radu Montan that all the film critics all the reviewers said uh, that's a film that's going to do well with the audiences and i think it was Radu's least successful film with the audience in Romania to the surprise of 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 everybody and that's indeed that's to say that in Romania we don't have the, the audience and the institution, and of course, with few exception, we don't have this practice, this exercise to exercise to to expect from cinema something great, to ex to to understand cinema, to to look at it like a like a, like a work of art. The, the Romanian audience is more interested in uh, the so-called objective uh, mythologies, you know, like the blockbusters and uh, and and stuff like that. They will reject everything that they will remind their the the their reality. They want to escape the reality. They don't want to embrace it. The reality is everywhere. Well, I don't agree with that, but that's what happens. Whereas, why I think it was so successful, and we're talking here, going back to Malcolm Gladwell book, uh, uh, who said that. There need to be some connectors. That's how he calls the people who appears at some point, you know, to seize uh, um, a potential in a work of art or in an enterprise or, or in something, and do something about it to make it uh, of a wider appeal or to make it well known or to promote it or whatever. And I think the film critics and the international film festivals were the connectors for the for all these successful new Romanian films from the very beginning and. Why is that? Because people like me, and probably more like you, who also used to write reviews about all the 
crappy Hollywood blockbusters <laughs> and all the films that were using all these objective mythologies and who are denying reality and who are using conventions which and conventions and genres in cinema are uh, like the the highest manipulation of the of the reality I think you and not only you but all the people like you are fed up with this approach and probably you also needed something real cinema to, to show something real and I think that was the moment when the, the new Romanian cinema came nice. because back then even the uh, countries like Hungary or or Czech Republic or stuff like that they were like kind of shattered after the, the fall of communism and of course they wanted to go on with their reputation and stuff like that and they started to do good box office hits i mean they were quite good in making in making commercial films but again they were they were they were denying this reality they were employing why is that there are no genre films in the romanian cinema i think that's why also because people are i mean genre cinema means a convention a fake even though you talk about the reality you're talking a fake way you edit in the, uh, a certain way. You film in a in a in a certain way. And I think for everybody, like film critics and and film programmers, when they saw even Stuff and Doe and even Occident and uh, the films that came and and then Lazarescu, not to mention, they were completely struck by 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 the by the truth truthfulness of it. Yeah, by the fact that you could see a work of art and, and appreciate it for what it is without resorting to manipulation, without resorting to, to any fireworks, just to what you see is what you get. It's not necessary, but there's always something beyond. That's why we call this edition also beyond, because people tend to say what you see is what you get. Indeed, it's true, but there's always something beyond the new Romanian cinema. And I also think that the, the film critics and the people who program this film uh, sense this and tend to, to put them in the spotlight. Right, any reaction, immediate reaction to what uh, uh, Mihai said? I, I just want to say that in the <laughs> cinema of my dreams, the death of Mr. Lazarescu is forever running on a double bill with Transformers 3, The Dark of the Moon. <laughs> uh, so I, I take both, uh, the manipulation <laughs> and the realism. You know. And, and, and you know, it's funny, talking about the genres, whenever this, some of these Romanian films were released in the U.S. in order to, to, to grab the attention of a, of a wider audience, uh, they were they were label labelized or labeled as the death of Mr. Zalescu, the best comedy of the year, um, yep. four months, three weeks, and two days, the most intriguing thriller of of yes, the year, absolutely. or stuff like that. You know, yeah. of course, if you ask Christy Puyo or Christian Mungio and stuff like that, they are like, "What the fuck is this? I mean, we didn't make a genre film." Well, there's a fantastic <laughs> poster for the death of Mr. Lazarescu. <laughs> I mean, when it was when it was released in the U.S., it had a wonderful image of a, of a, just the the empty stretcher with the cat on it. But in Romania there was a poster that really did look like a comedy with the whole cast absolutely. standing around kind of, you know, throwing their hands in the absolutely. air with big smiles on their faces. And it's hilarious because it has no representation of the film whatsoever. Whatsoever. Just, I, I, just I another... Would, uh, I, yeah, I, I would just add one thing because we are always committed to uh, to, to bringing over guests from, from uh, Romania for the film festival. And this year we brought more actors than ever. And I know it's a category you, we always forget, but I do believe there's no hazard that some of the first amazing prizes, awards uh, that were won here in the US for films were by actors, by Romanian actors. And I do believe that the acting quality was also something that had to do with the quality, immense quality of this film. So I just wanted to pay the homage to the Romanian actors. Yeah, I was about to mention oh, yes. this as ah. well in relation to what I said, in relation to this, uh, to this quest for, for truth. I mean, uh, maybe, Mm. At first, you don't tend to praise the actors because, uh, uh, like Puyo said again, I mean Puyo must hike up uh, <laughs> tonight. Let's I mean, hope so. the, the actors in most of the Romanian films they they don't act; they simply are. You know, so you tend to 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 think that their performance is invisible and it is invisible because you don't see the artifices you don't see the the firework in their in their because they they simply embody the character they don't play it they just get under their skin and they are so they're very natural and that's because why they are so good you, 
and they are so good, yeah, at the end of the day. That's and it. the same with the film style, you know, all these tracking shots that you see in Scorsese, in Balatar, but in uh, films, but they always have, I think, a different reason and a, a different motivation than in the Romanian cinema, which is, in my opinion, again, this, uh, this complete rejection of manipulation. So if you want to experience a situation, you have to experience with, uh, without the benefits of the cuts, of the, of the close-ups. You just need to place the camera in the perfect place at the right distance and witness the whole scene. It's the wonderful scene that, that comes to mind from Tuesday after Christmas, the, the breakup scene, which is mm -hmm. shot from the right distance in a long tracking shot. And you, you might say that it's going to be a cold thing because you won't get close to the actors. But I think this is really a striking way to get the right emotion, not in your face, not man it's not a fake emotion, not manipulated, but a real one. And the actors are, of course, again, perfect in transmitting this emotion. Magda. Well, I want to come back uh, to what you have said about the audience. I speak my mind. It's quite difficult to speak about a larger audience in Romania concerning the cinema because you have to know that in all the country there are in this moment only 60 cinema theaters. So, how to speak? Yes, 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 sir, yes. 60, 60. No, Madi, there are more. No, there are more. S six, Come on. 60 remaining. There are, six, there are 60 multiplexes remaining. already remaining. in the whole country. Remaining, so it's difficult to have a larger audience. Right, so, of course, I mean, this is a totally different issue and indeed uh, it... Um, it is very saddening that we, we uh, have more debate and more audience, basically, we had more audience at Lincoln Center with, <laughs> with the Romanian <laughs> Film uh, Festival yeah, yeah, than yeah, we, yeah. some of th those films had in Romania already. Now, I, we still have five minutes and I would uh, yeah. just ask maybe the people from the audience to ask questions because mm. you might want to ask questions. I think the best person to answer is actually the representative of the only institution who's doing something about it, which is Corina. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I, well, <laughs> well, because if I you, uh, would <laughs> rather not use these five minutes to answer this. I mean, that, that there is, I, I, anyway, as, as, as far as my institution goes, the Romanian Cultural Institute, I can say that we are deeply aware about this phenomenon. We encouraged it, with, we, we supported it, and... Uh, Well, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I would, yeah, Radu, could, can I answer, but I... I think you'll need to, to talk to uh, Mr. Radu Gabla, I, I, who's I there really after the I screening, mean, and you'll have a long I mean, night. I really, I, I really wouldn't, but of course, Radu, please say, say if you wish.
Thank you, thank you, Radu Gabra. Now, I mean, uh, yeah, just to, to, Radu Gabra is one of uh, uh, our most important filmmakers. He's also a guest at our festival. He presented here uh, this year um, uh, one of those films who are still historical and not speaking about just ordinary people, about, but about ordinary people in extraordinary conditions. His film Red Gloves was uh, screened um, at, at uh, Walter Reed uh, Theatre, and he is one of uh, those very impress impressive uh, directors that, that succeeded in creating each time uh, um, uh, historical frescas about very, very troubling subjects. Radu Gabra is one of, of the, the representatives of this generation of, of directors, but he also was the creator of this law that he spoke about. I just didn't want to enter the whole issue of finances and how, how this works, but, but again, it is an interesting issue, and of course that we have a lot of debate in Romania, and there is a lot of debate. Unfortunately, this debate didn't com concretize yet in something to be today um, as coherent and as strong as the creative part of the cinema industry. Uh, is now maybe we have time for another question. Uh, yeah, well, just yeah. Well, I, I think no, one of the interest. I know they have the same impact. Anyway, I should like to give you a good uh, a good news. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, this like is not a good, good news. Uh, it seems that uh, the next year will be a wonderful one because all the best uh, new filmmakers, Christy Poole, begin if we have again. To, we, we have <laughs> <to> again. God. <laughs> <laughs> Christy, if you are here no, and he's a very, very special you hear us. person, so, uh, <laughs> no. Christy Puyo, Christi, uh, Christian Mungiu, Cornelio Corumboyo, Catalin Mitulescu, all these uh, wonderful uh, young film, also not such a film, uh, we are anyway, so. Uh, they got a grant from our uh, Central uh, of Cinematography and uh, they will work next year. Christy Mungiu, Christi, Christian Mungiu, no. Uh, he will be on the location shooting uh, after five years. Uh, so I think this is a good news. So we have to expect uh, for the immediate future from some good Romanian films, I hope. Yeah, I just wanted to say, I mean, I'm struck by two films that are in the festival this year by relatively new filmmakers, The uh, uh, Principles of Life and uh, Hello, How Are You?, which are yeah. films that have uh, no connection at all to uh, communism or uh, mm. uh, dreary, dreary, bleak subjects. And actually, both present uh, Bucharest as a very modern, uh, contemporary city, and they're focused on uh, the lives of um, upper-middle-class uh, people, and uh, they feel like stories that could be taking place uh, in any city in the world. Hello, How Are You? Uh, it strikes me as maybe the first Romanian film of this new generation that's more likely to be uh, remade in America than distributed in America because it's <laughs> such a, a translatable concept. Um, so I think that, in a way, is what you'll see m maybe more now from the, the next uh, generation. Christian Mongiu, his next film will be connected with a religious uh, topic, so but extremely it's different. Still with very Romanian context oh, around. Of course. Mihai and Jay, a last comment yeah, on this? Uh, on this in particular, yeah. I, I think there is a, 
There's a, a concern, though, that um, too many people are expecting a particular kind of subject to be dealt with by Romanians, by Romanian directors. And I it's not just in Romania. I think that uh, th th this is true of, of, of many other countries' work. So a Brazilian film, if it's not about the favelas, people think, oh, we don't want that because it's Brazilian. Surely it has to deal with the favelas. Um, this is something that I think that the Romanian directors themselves have been struggling with for some time. How do we get beyond this? We want to tell other stories because we all have just as many stories in, in Romania as you do in any other country, they're not always tied to 1989. Um, so I, I, I agree, I think there is, uh, it's great that there's a generation now of people who don't necessarily want to deal with this. Maybe it, it gets worked in a little bit, but it w I think critics uh, and audiences need to be very attentive to the, to, the, to the concept that we can't just pigeonhole uh, what subjects we expect to come out of a country. Right. Mihai, last. No, well, I tend to, to be a prophet in this. <laughs> uh, and uh, going to the core of your question, I think uh, um, that Romanian cinema for a while is going gonna, is gonna to do um, what it does best. So films like you've seen in the last 10 years or 11 years. Um, of course, each one of the filmmakers pumping their own personality, but in uh, using more or less the same approach, which is this very close to the reality. I think what's remarkable actually about the Romanian cinema in the last 10 years is that it serves as a, as a, as a, as a, as a mirror to the, the changing in the, the contemporary changes in the Romanian society after the revolution. So you can, look at these films and you can have like a history lesson no matter how crazy it may sound but but in my opinion it is like that uh, but i think the there will be another tipping point at some at some point when uh, people will be fed up with this uh, with this uh, pact with the, with the reality and they will want to evade once again I mean, there are signals like this because there are few voices, few people in the in the Romanian cinema. Some of them are quite quite talented, judging by the short films they do, uh, who are not necessarily let's say let's put it bluntly, they are not necessarily fans of this type of cinema, which is very direct and connected with the reality. So they're much more, much more into. A fantasy world they want to they want to they, they want to build so I personally expect in I don't know two generations from now to witness films dealing with a with a with a completely different type of reality but not the one we are living in I mean that's my uh, that's 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 my bet Probably I won't be leaving. <laughs> but <laughs> Thank you. That was very, very nice, uh, Mihai. So uh, I'm unfortunately we just passed the, the the hour and we have to stop here. But thank you, thank you all for for coming and for for having this wonderful conversation that can last forever. And because <laughs> we spoke so much about Christy Puy, I just want to insist <laughs> and tell you that our focus this year was on Radu Muntan. Radu and Andrew, Andy Vasluyanu just left because The Fury, his first film, is, uh, was screened while we had our panel, but two of his movies are going to be presented tomorrow, and I invite you all to see them. Uh, uh, the paper will be blue and Tuesday, th Tuesday after Christmas. And uh, also, I uh, just want to say again that I thank very much the uh, Romanian actors and critics who crossed the ocean to come here and share all this uh, with us. And thank you all for coming.